Well, I want to uh, welcome everyone back to uh, our Shifted Ed podcast series. Um, we started doing these post-pandemic podcasts, talking to uh, our Quebec educators um, to share it to our community, to just kind of get a vibe of what's going on out there in our educational field. And today I have a, the great privilege of welcoming Kath, Catherine DeVolis, um, who is currently working at the uh, Ministry on the Preschool Program. So today we're going to have a little conversation about the new program um, and kind of how it came um, to being um, and kind of some um, ideas for teachers and uh, where PD might happen, et cetera, to kind of support this new program because it is pretty um, fantastic. So Catherine, hello. I would like to uh, wish you a fine, crisp Monday morning. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? I'm great, Chris. Uh, thank you so much for having me. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. It was a wonderful weekend. And now uh, I get to start off a great week uh, uh, having a great conversation. So thank you for joining us today. Um, My pleasure. So, Catherine, let's just start off. Um, big question here. What got you interested in education? Like, as you were, you know, going through CJEP and like, what, what was the spark that got you, I need to be an educator? Oh, yeah, interesting question. So mm -hmm. I always had uh, wonderful experiences with my own teachers uh, all throughout my school years in elementary school and in high school. I always looked up to them. They were my mentors. I loved going to school. I loved uh, discovering new things. I felt that I could actually track my own uh, development. And so I pretty much knew I wanted to go into teaching when I was close to 12 years old. I was set. I was decided. I never changed my mind. Um, I love children. Um, I never, ever looked into um, another field. And then when I pursued my studies in SEJEP and then in university, I actually did both Concordia and McGill. Uh, and uh, I studied for eight years in uh, university to, to specialize. Oh. Um, I realized that, uh, you know, as, as soon as I got into the classroom, the, the first couple of years, it was exactly what I was searching for was to see that magical moment in a child's eyes when something clicked and they made their own discoveries and I felt that yes this is exactly what I was always uh, longing for what I was searching for is to guide them to get to that point and so I'm uh, very very satisfied with my career choice I've been working for uh, as you know Chris because we, we've been working together as well I think you were going to ask me um, what uh, board I'm affiliated with yeah where, where did you where did you come from from uh, um before you join the MEQ? So, uh, yes. So I've been uh, with uh, the Lester B. Pearson School Board for 20 years. Uh, very loyal. I, uh, I, I, I never uh, switched boards. Um, and uh, I worked at, uh, as, as a kindergarten teacher, of course, at uh, Forest Hill Junior in St. Lazar. And then uh, I was at St. Paul Elementary School, which since then has turned into Sherbrooke Academy Junior in Beaconsfield. Right. Right. And then I've been, um, I'm on a loan of service uh, with the uh, preschool education team at the Ministry of Education since last January. So I've been uh, uh, doing this for about a year and I'm loving it. I work with a, a wonderful group of fantastic uh, collaborators. Excellent. Yeah, it's a great team. Uh, it, you guys have been out there with this new program, which Absolutely. Um, our <laughs> community just loves. Um, and it's exciting, eh? this new program. Uh, I can't wait to just dive into it. But um, so you started off at, at Lester B and, and now you're on a loan of service and you're working on the preschool program itself. Yes. Awesome. Well, let's just dive into that new program. I mean, can you can you talk about the new preschool program? Um, Tell us like how it came to be, because um, I'm sure it took uh, uh, some time for it to evolve into its current state. Yes, and it was actually quite the process, Chris, I must say. So I will try to give you a brief overview, uh, but I don't really want to leave anything out because I really need to put an emphasis on how much work uh, went into this. So well, I'm, um, sure, I'm sure like many players were involved, I'm sure. To absolutely, get to... absolutely. Awesome. So teachers probably recall that after the uh, kindergarten for four-year-olds uh, program was created close to about a decade ago, uh, 
this was the uh, project program. It was uh, very well received by the K-4 teachers, but it was also uh, very interesting to the K-5 teachers who enjoyed many aspects of this K-4 program. And they also felt that perhaps it was time for the kindergarten for five-year-olds program to be updated. So there was this desire to really experience preschool as a cycle and not as two separate grades. And then um, the rest followed. So for example, the MEQ uh, carefully considered the needs of the kindergarten teachers and listened to them uh, regarding uh, wanting uh, a cycle program in preschool. After that, there was a consultation group that was formed in 2018, and it consisted of uh, representatives from all regions of the province, including K-4 and K-5 teachers from both French and English school boards, from the public school system and from the private sector. So these were individuals nominated by their respective boards who did not necessarily know each other, but they were uh, considered because of their expertise in uh, the field of education. There were um, many consultation meetings, Chris, with the uh, MEQ team, uh, where the goal was to take a closer look at both the K-4 and K-5 programs and discuss what would be significant to retain in regards to child development Great. and what was uh, different and similar in both programs was also discussed. So mm. this was a, a, a long process and it took um, a year of going back and forth where these individuals really took the time necessary to deconstruct, I would say, both programs. Great. What uh, came out of the, that process was a compilation of information that individuals from the field had provided and really fusion both K-4 and K-5 programs. So after that, the, the step, the next step was to put it all together. And in 2018, a first version appeared, which was reviewed by various stakeholders, which included uh, partners from the education field, of course, the unions, the AEPQ, mm -hmm. university professors, a scientific community had also been consulted. So this, um, I'm almost done, Chris, I'm sorry. Yeah, so this, no, uh, but there's so much to share about this. For um, sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, so this uh, consultation process basically involved a large number of specialists that had a level of expertise in child development. There were also other experts that were appointed to conduct research in regards to the characteristics and the needs of a four to six year old child. So right. once that version had been finalized, there was a period where teachers and preschool education consultants had been selected to do a trial run of the program. And it was not the same teachers uh, that had participated during the, the consultation process. So finally, all the comments and the reflections that, that were pointed out during this trial period were considered mm -hmm. and there were some final adjustments that had been made. And so as we all know, as of August 2021, the preschool cycle program has been the mandated and sole prescriptive program for all kindergarten classes in our province. Excellent. What a journey, though. Eh? I mean, it sounds yeah. like there is many players involved and it really got vetted um, so that it was the best that it could be. Yes, I agree. <laughs> what? Tell me, Catherine, what's... What's the what's the benefits of a cycle program as opposed to having a K four K five? Why why fuse them together? What what would be the benefits of those of bringing them together as one unit or one cycle? I should say. Well, it, you know, first of all, it was something that uh, the the teachers uh, were wanting. It was something that they uh, uh, hoped for. Mm -hmm. uh, so we also mentioned this earlier. You know, uh, many uh, preschool teachers had been hoping for uh, a cycle program in in uh, kindergarten for a long time. Uh, right. They inspired themselves because the the from the primary and the secondary levels, because those right. are still and and had been divided into cycles. So to right. them, it was only logical that a developmental program mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. divided into a cycle as well. So. For instance, uh, we can reference ourselves um, in the uh, Quebec education program. In, in the very first pages of the Quebec education program, it does state that in a cycle, the organizational mode takes into account the development of skills over time. So we mm -hmm. give ourselves about two years, which would right. really be um, representing a cycle. It also states that it allows for learning, 
uh, activities and projects to evolve during that time period, right? Yes. So it involves long-term pedagogical interventions. Um, it favors greater pedagogical differentiation practices. And all of that can be found in the Quebec Education Program on page five. So uh, in preschool right. education, the, the cycle is at the service of children's learning. It offers right. equal opportunities to develop in different areas in order to succeed and to learn uh, throughout life. Right. It's kind of like a, a prep course for life for these, our youngest learner. I mean, it really gets them ready for a life of learning. It's filling up their little learner's <laughs> toolkit for life and bringing it with yep. them wherever they go. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that too, that it's, it's looking at development, um, you know, the individual development of the child and that it's, it's progressive, right? Like it happens at different stages for all of our littlest learners, but they all kind of develop this through the same stages, correct? Yes. And, uh, you know, they, they follow at their own pace, right? And, and as right. teachers, we, we guide them and we support them by respecting their own pace. Absolutely. Right. Well, it brings me to this question too. I kind of, I've been kind of into mindsets a lot. Like when I'm, I'm, I'm delving into kind of outdoor ed and what's the mindset you need to have when you go into outdoor ed, for example. So a similar question to that is what is the preschool mindset? Like how, how should I, if I'm a teacher or going into preschool or what's that mindset do you think that is needed to be able to fulfill um, that position? That's an excellent question, Chris. I'd have to say that uh, first uh, and foremost, I think it's necessary to have uh, a positive outlook on the importance of play. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, an educator would need a, a high uh, tolerance for an elevated noise level. <laughs> uh, that's yep. necessary, but it's not just for the, the teachers and educators, but for all those individuals that are working around uh, right. the children in kindergarten. Sometimes what I uh, used to do is I would picture uh, the children in my classroom just like buzzing around like little bees <laughs> and my classroom would be the hive. <laughs> so it would great. be noisy. Yeah. There's like a bunch of effervescence going around. Right. Uh, they're, they're buzzing constantly, developing and learning. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted them to be full of excitement uh, mm -hmm. this, this is actually what allows me to paint a clear portrait in my head of what a kindergarten classroom should be all about. Um, I also think we should keep in mind that by adopting uh, an inclusive and caring stance uh, as teachers, we are welcoming the child and supporting uh, all children in their development uh, and allowing them to reach their full potential, but also to build their little uh, learner's toolkit for life, as we mentioned earlier, and to take it with them wherever they go. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's that foundation, right, that that you're creating in preschool for a life, right, for for years and decades to come. Um, yes. Yeah. I've always felt that preschool is probably one of the most important um, jobs in our society, because it is the, the, the building blocks for the future. Um, these yes. are our, are going to be our, our young rulers one day, you know, and taking care of us when we're old and, and gray. Let's not go yes. there. But, <laughs> no, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, I loved your um, your imagery of of uh, this class like a beehive. I mean, what a great uh, image of buzzing around and kids doing different things at different areas. It kind of can you expand on that a bit? So, like, what's that look and feel that we're looking for when we go into a preschool classroom? And say, for example, it's just you know a parent walking in and seeing. What would we, what would that person see when they walk into what what, what should it look and feel like in your opinion? So it, it should be, uh, you know, obviously, we're not going to lie and say that it, it should not be aesthetically pleasing. Of course, it should be aesthetically pleasing, right. but it's also going to reflect the personality of its occupants. And, and that mm. includes, of course, the, the children in the classroom and the teacher. But mm. above all, uh, parents should be able to notice that it, it, it's a reassuring and uh, welcoming and uh, inclusive environment. These are all words that have been taken from the program. So there is an emphasis on inclusion and uh, the reassurance and, and how we should be welcoming uh, the, the, the children into our classrooms every day. Right. Um, it, it should allow for children to develop and to learn. But also, this is very important, it should allow them to feel recognized and accepted hmm. for who they are, which is just right. that they are four to six year old children with mm -hmm. their own 
characteristics and their needs. Mm -hmm. I also would say, Chris, that it should be a warm and open space that yes. is, uh, of course, physically adapted to the needs of four to six year old children. And it has to be safe and accessible. Um, a preschool classroom should be organized in a, a way as to foster the children's participation and uh, encourage them to explore different types of play. So, right. of course, there are some uh, basic principles that cannot be ignored when uh, planning the layout of a kindergarten classroom. Mm -hmm. So, for yes. example, um, I would tell teachers that the design of the classroom must take into account uh, or should take into account the five mm -hmm. areas of development that we, we find in the program, but right. it should also uh, take into account the organization of the space and the organization of the day. Um, it's obvious that the child needs an environment that will stimulate him uh, visually, like we said earlier, but the most important thing is to design such a space that will allow him to feel accepted and recognized again for who he is. So hoping that this inclusive environment will allow the child to enjoy learning. Uh, we also hope that it will offer, you know, different opportunities for exploration and also a chance to make discoveries. So, you know, talking about the ideal room and the ideal materials and having the perfect accessories, it's not a realistic expectation, but rather trying to foster a space that, you know, is accessible and safe, where the child feels happy, uh, active, and uh, becomes engaged in his learning. Well, th that's what the goal should be. How to right. foster a space where the child feel it feels well is what we say in French, son bien-être. It's right. very important. Right. I love the um, word that you use that the classroom should be open. And you alluded to it that physically open, but also um, for the child's mind to be open, right? That everything is possible, you know, yes. and, and there's inclusion and the child feels like they are um, a part of this community, a part of this group, a part of this. Recognized a part of the yeah, community, accepted, absolutely. of course. That's so, so amazing. It's, it's powerful. Um, it seems simple, but it's, um, it's uh, teachers are like um, orchestra conductors, right? Where you have to orchestrate, particularly in preschool. I, I, I'm guessing, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked a little bit with our youngest learners, but um, throughout the day, you're kind of orchestrating and um, facilitating this development to, to happen. Facilitating. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, I mean, the program is, is, I mean, I love it. I mean, I've been reading through it and the documentation that the ministry has provided is really insightful. Um, those three documents that accompany it, where they look at play in the classroom design um, and observing, looking at mm -hmm. children um, engaged in play. Why is play so important? Because oftentimes I think we see play as kind of a, it's outside of learning, right? It's not seen as, you know, we go and play during recess or at lunch. The actual idea of play for learning um, can be kind of a new concept for teachers to wrap their heads around. Yeah, I, and yet for some, I think it's it's uh, as uh, as old as day itself. Because uh, mm -hmm. for myself as a, as a as a teacher, I always. Uh, devoted so much time to play and right. uh, it, it was interesting to see just how much the children would evolve during uh, any type of play activity that they would be engaging in and uh, you see all the areas of development really right. come into the, a synergy and you, you you can actually see this interrelation so it's not only is it a wonderful and joyful uh, experience for the children but it really is the child's ideal way to learn and I I love that the program just, you know, it, it states that from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, the, the more the children get to play, we do mention that, you know, uh, we, we have to, we should offer the children two periods between 45 and 60 minutes of right. continuous play during a day. But a lot of the teachers have already done that. They, 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 they were doing so. I, I right. know the teachers that I had worked with, it was such an important part of our, of our uh, teaching routine. And we really enjoyed the outdoors. So it's uh, something that's always been part of kindergarten and, and preschool in general yeah if only we could push that further up into cycle one sometimes <laughs> this idea of this lifelong kindergarten or lifelong preschool that play is a part of the learning process rather than yes. kind of remove from it I find when hands get involved 
um, learning goes deep and tends to stick better inside the, the, yes, the learner. Yes, Chris, you know, of course. Once you get those hands going. So let's kind of jump to what are those differences, Catherine? So oftentimes teachers flip-flop, right? Like uh, they'll be teaching in cycle one and then they need a teacher in preschool. So they'll move to preschool or, or the other way, right? The pendulum kind of swings there. What are the, what's the difference between a preschool cycle and your first cycle one elementary? Like what would be the main differences between those two? Um, I imagine the approach and the environment are going to be very, very different. Yes. Uh, however, if we have to also talk about the programs themselves, the programs are different because uh, the uh, preschool right. cycle program is a developmental program. Right. And the cycle one program is a disciplinary one. So cycle one, we're talking about grade one and grade two. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, preschool, there's no progression of learning. Right. Uh, there's there's no uh, specific content that is organized in a way with specific expectations. What we do is we observe the child in preschool in his development and we look carefully at how he is developing in all mm -hmm five areas right. the, the time allotted to play again we're going back to play because it's so mm -hmm. important it's right. so crucial in kindergarten and it's the first orientation of our preschool cycle program in cycle one there is less time devoted to play and as the right. years go by even less so in school agree, so the the support that teachers um offer is also significant because in preschool the children are supported in all areas of development. The uh, classroom organization is another one of the three orientations and it is considered very carefully as mm -hmm. the classroom environment in which the child uh, plays and engages in all types of learning opportunities should respond to the needs of a four to six year old child. It has to be organized in a way to equip him with all that he needs to develop and uh, to learn. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I love play. You know, even as an adult, I try to play as much as I can um, because I do feel there are such great benefits and development of skills that come into play as as you play. Um, but we must, we must, Chris. I mean, Stuart yeah. Brown, right? Mm -hmm, he, he's mm -hmm. always talking about how we should continue playing as adults. And even right. when we're much older and he really makes us think about like, why did we stop playing or, you know, mm -hmm. or, or when was the last time we played and how did it make us feel? So we have to keep playing. It's so important. Oh, I totally agree with you. I love it. Um, well, in closing, Catherine, um, what advice would you give a preschool educator um, if they're implementing this new program, what are a few of your, your salient takeaways that you would want teachers to leave, um, understanding or embodying, um, in regards to the preschool program? Yeah, th that's an excellent question, actually. Uh, I would say I would say to the teachers that right now is really a wonderful time to be a kindergarten teacher. So honestly, enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. This new program, which places the child at the center and acknowledges the fact that the child should be given enough time to explore and learn at his own pace. Uh, it, it's a program that recognizes play to be the child's ideal way to learn. Uh, how wonderful is that? Um, the uh, the yeah. emphasis on uh, uh, indoor play just as much as outdoor play. And Chris, you've mm -hmm. been working a lot in that regard. Um, yeah. it, it also recognizes uh, the teacher's expertise and promotes school, family, and uh, community collaboration. Mm -hmm. The, this cycle, the preschool cycle, gives time to the child to learn, and it also gives the teacher an opportunity to respect the pace of the child in uh, his uh, development. I find personally that um, myself and uh, my, my colleagues and uh, the teachers I had been working with, we find that the program really has everything to guide uh, and fuel the teachers in their learning process mm -hmm. and to implement it as well. We, we all agree that it's user-friendly. The table of the areas of development is mm -hmm. colorful. The, mm -hmm. the colors have been carefully selected to reflect the, the spheres of development. There are key features that are present for each competency, there are observable behaviors to guide the teachers in their observations, but also to guide them in their planning. Uh, it's been well written. We mentioned earlier all the research that was conducted in order to create the program. I would also say, I think, uh, to the teachers that it's uh, simple to embrace this program. It has 
everything we need us as teachers to feel recognized and content and uh, even confident in our profession as we have been given a program that will help our little bees to learn and develop uh, so many strategies. It's, um, it's a program, but it's also a tool that allows us to look at the child, uh, to look at what the child rather can do and to reflect on the interventions we need to put in place to support all the children in our classroom. I also, in closing, I wanna to say to all the teachers that I am envious of you guys right now. And I, I can't wait to, myself to return back to the classroom at some point to implement uh, the preschool cycle program because I'm, I'm really excited to watch my, my little learners buzz around with excitement. Uh, I really miss that. And I, um, you know, just to see them eager to learn every day and to watch them develop to their full potential. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I want to thank you, um, Catherine, for for spending some time with us here today. Um, I just a note: I will put um, the links to the program um, in the descriptor, so you have yes. access to those, everyone. So if you want to have a look at them, but um, your words have been really, really inspiring and um, make me want to go back to the classroom too and teach kindergarten kids. A love oh. I've never taught, <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god, I think, I think it, it would, would just be, be so fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for having me and uh, really for allowing me to to talk about the the, the genesis of this program and uh, its orientations and its components and and what it entails. And uh, I think for teachers, this uh, podcast just you know your questions will be very inspiring and hopefully our answers as well uh, mm -hmm. to to guide the teachers in uh, in this uh, new endeavor. Absolutely. Well, it's a new journey for everyone, right? So yes. it's a long, lifelong journey as well. So it's been a real pleasure kind of um, exploring the journey of how the program became and also its future. And I think the future is bright for our preschool kids. I really, really do. I think that the orientation of this project and the work that the ministry has done um, with all of its players that it got involved uh, to make something that's solid um, and that's based on the development of our youngest learners, which I think is crucial Absolutely. Um, as we move forward. So thank you very much, Catherine. I wish you a, a, a wonderful um, um, end of your journey with the MEQ. And when you get back in that classroom, let's uh, touch base again. I'd love to uh, hear about the stories of Definitely, implementing this we will. program. <laughs> thank awesome. you so much, Chris. Take care. Have a great day.